at a simple interest example. Pretend you're borrowing $1,000 from a friend, we call that the principal. And your fee for borrowing the money is 10% for a given amount of time, and we'll say every single year. To figure out how much you'll pay per year, we're gonna multiply what you borrowed by 10%, or let's change that to a decimal, 0.10. And that is going to be equal to $100 every single year. It doesn't matter if it's just one year, if it's two years, four years, even if it's 10 years, you're always gonna pay $100 every single year with simple interest. Let's compare the same situation with compound interest, which is actually, it builds really fast because it has to do with interest on interest. And the power of this happens with time. So remember with simple interest, I was only making $100 every single year consistently. So same situation, $1,000, 10%. So we're still gonna multiply by 0.10, um, but in this case, I don't have any interest. So I'm just gonna multiply it by 1,000 and I still get $100 in interest. But this is where it gets interesting math marble. I'm going to take this $100 and now pile it in here. So if I want to go to year two, I'm finding 10% of this amount, my principal plus my interest. And if I do that, in this year if I find 10%, I am just paying $110 in interest in my second year. So again, pretend year passes by, I now add this to my pile, and in year three, I am finding 10% of this amount. So I'm paying 1,020, oops, I know I have it in here, $21 in year three at 10%. So I keep compounding, so I'm compounding it, putting the money in there, and in year four, I'm finding 10% of this amount now. And so that is, one hundred thirty three dollars. One, two, three. Um, some of you might notice that because it's ten percent, I'm just moving a decimal over by one, so it makes it a little faster to do. All right. So let's keep going. Same thing happens at the end of year four. So now look how big my pile has gotten. Not only do I owe my original $1,000, but I also owe extra, an extra $464. And now I'm up to this last year um, and there was some change in there. I had owed another 10 cents. So in this year, if I'm finding 10%, it's $146 and 41 cents. So I didn't put the 41 cents, I didn't have paper paper change math marble, but you get the idea. Um, so look at how much my interest has grown. Originally it was only supposed to be in simple interest $100 and look at all this extra interest I'm making on top of the interest by year five. And the more time goes by, the more this builds. So at the end of year five, look at how much money you now owe on top of your principal. So you bought, it will be $1,610.51 and compared to simple interest, that was only $500. So you're definitely paying more with compound interest. But what would happen if I wanted to know the 10th year? Do I have to keep on doing it year at a time, year at a time, or is there a faster way? And you guessed it, Math Marble, there is a faster way using an actual formula. So let's go into that situation. Okay, let's compare the same situation with simple and compound interest. So again, my principal is $1,000 borrowed at 10% for 10 years. And we're gonna start by comparing both formulas. Okay, look at these two formulas and how different they look. And they both look very complicated, but some things are gonna be the same. So for example, you'll see the PRT here and the PRT here in different parts of the formula. So let's start putting those numbers in and then comparing them out. 
All right, here's everything. I substituted into the simple interest and into our compound interest. And there are two variables in compound that you don't see in simple. And that is the A and that is the N. So with the A, this is pretty much figuring out everything you pay over those 10 years, all the principal, so all the money that you borrow, plus all the interest that you've accumulated, that's gonna give us this A. And for this N, this tells us in some cases, um, there's situations where you might be charged interest more than once a year. So for example, if it's annually, that means you pay like one time a year, that 10%, this happens one time a year, so it's just, 10% once a year. But let's say you're paying monthly, then that 10% is gonna be divided over the 12 months. And so you're getting compounded interest in smaller doses over all 12 months. So it's really important to know um, what that N might be. Um, there are some cases like credit cards that might even do it daily. Can you imagine if they take your percentage and divide it by 365 and you're, being, you're compounding interest that many times a year? That, that is just a lot. But for our purposes, I'm going to make it easy and make this N one. So I'm gonna pretend that we just do this one time a year. It's just gonna be annual to help us out, okay? So I hope that makes it a little bit easier. So let's re-simplify this problem so we can kind of see it just one more time. So A is equal to 1,000 times, now 10% divided by one is still 10%, so it's gonna be plus 0.10. So I'm gonna put that in here. And one times 10 is just 10. Okay, so you are gonna need a scientific calculator because of this exponent right here. And if you do that, you're gonna get a total amount of $2,593.74. Now, this is with your principal, the $1,000 you borrowed, plus your interest. So if you just want the interest, I'll take the thousand dollars out. It's one thousand five hundred ninety-three dollars and seventy-four cents. All I did was take away the interest. So that's how much I pay in compound. With simple, if you just multiply these three numbers, remember turn this into a percent, into a decimal. It's just going to be one thousand dollars in interest. And let's compare these two numbers. Look at in simple interest. If you're just doing the rate times just the principal is a thousand, but look at how much because you're charging interest on top of interest. So your interest is much higher with compound interest. Well, I hope that makes sense to you, Math Marvel, and you can continue to use this information about interest, compound, and simple interest to make really smart decisions, whether you're borrowing money or if you are lending money as an investor. Um, neither one is better or worse than the other. It just depends on you knowing what situation works best for you. We'll see you next time, Math Marvel. Take care.